This is a forest agricultural parcel right here. This is a creek that runs through this. And across highway, this is highway 17 here. Across highway 17, this is a, this is several parcels that are owned plan, or that are zoned planned development. They're currently vacant, uh, but the PD text does call out mixed use residential and commercial. Behind there off of Southport Parkway is a multifamily residential project right here. And then here at the corner of Deerwood Way and Highway 17, this is a vacant plan development that their PD text also calls out mixed use residential and commercial. And then across the way at the corner of Southport Parkway and Highway 17, this is a highway commercial zone piece that is currently undeveloped. This is just a view of the property. The subject property is on the right hand side of the screen. And another view, um, and the property is on the left hand side of your screen. So it's currently a wooded parcel. <clears throat> Uh, so as I mentioned, they are looking to do a recreational vehicle park, uh, but any of the uses would be allowed under highway commercial. Uh, there is a concurrent application that will be the next item on your agenda for a conditional use permit, and so that will be heard as well this evening. This is a survey of the property. Um, this is the property right here. Uh, there are several wetland areas that are on the site. This is the, the largest um, right here, and then there are several wetland areas kind of along the creek over on this side. And here's a list of the current allowed uses that are in highway commercial. So uh, if it is rezoned to this, any of these uses could be allowed outright. Yes, sure. And I can just kind of read through these. Um, amusement centers, truck transportation terminal, uh, retail, wholesale business, um, business involving rendering of a personal service, um, private or semi-private club, church, synagogue, um, off-street commercial parking, hotel, tourist home or motel, commercial trade, vocational or private school. And the list continues over here. Restaurants, radio, television stations, public utilities, office buildings, uh, repair garages, uh, accessory uses that are um, accessory to primary allowed use, newspaper publishing plant, uh, any kind of educational facilities, retail, telecommunication facilities. And then these are the list of conditional uses. So these would require a conditional use permit if somebody wanted to do one of these uses. And that is car wash, temporary use, automobile service station, animal hospital or boarding, community hospitals or clinics, uh, dormitories or living quarters, public or private care homes, <coughs> mini warehouses, and then the recreational vehicle park, which is what the current owner is interested in doing, and then mixed, mixed retail or wholesale printing operations. And there are several special uses as well that um, also have a similar process to a conditional use permit um, to be allowed. So there are a number of considerations that the board would look at in deciding whether a rezone is appropriate for this parcel. These are outlined in the staff report you received as well. Uh, the first uh, really talks about the suitability of the property for highway commercial, looking at what's in the surrounding areas, uh, how suitable is this property for for the request to highway commercial. Uh, the second consideration is how, how the zoning decision would adversely affect the existing use or usability of adjacent or nearby property. <clears throat> the third one is um, how the property would be affected by the zoning decision and if it has a reasonable economic use is currently zoned. Uh, the fourth one uh, would be if the zoning decision would cause excessive or burdensome uh, use of existing streets, transportation facilities, utilities, or schools. Uh, the fifth would be whether the zoning decision is in conformity with the policy and intent of the comprehensive land use plan. Uh, so with that, I did include a copy of our future land use map that the county has adopted. Here is the property right here with the star off of here at Highway 17. <clears throat> and what we show on our future land use map, um, this large kind of blue turquoise circle is um, really called out as a regional center. So we're looking at um, you know, higher densities, um, you know, more commercial uses, you know, something that would be appropriate for an exit off of you know, I-95 interchange. So if you note uh, that area 
these aren't really parcel by parcel. It's more of a guideline of what we would be looking at for future land use. Uh, so that line kind of ends right around here, uh, right, really right before you get to Southport Parkway and Deerwood Trail or Deerwood Way. Um, and this is the property right here. Uh, what you see in kind of this darker <laughs> khaki color is uh, what we're calling out as medium re density residential, uh, which could be multifamily is what we're calling out as medium density. And then in this lighter color, this is um, you know, more rural forest agricultural in that area. <clears throat> and so these are just additional considerations that the board would also be looking at um, when they're looking at a rezone decision. <clears throat> so the Planning Commission did hold a duly noticed public hearing on January 16th. Um, there were, um, they did have the public hearing and there were a couple comments that night. Uh, they did recommend to the board approval of the rezone. It was a 5-2 decision. And so your possible motions this evening are approval of this rezone um, or denial of it. Um, and then a recommended motion is uh, staff recommends approval as presented. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And also um, Pete Schoenauer and um, Mario uh, Garcia, the owner and the applicant's representative are here this night if you have any questions of them. I have some questions, please. Sure. Okay. What kind of buffer is there between that and the subdivision? Uh, is there a buffer? Sure. Um, as part of our site plan, so whatever use would be going on there, if it is commercial or multifamily or anything non-residential, our site plan criteria does um, look at buffers. And so um, they, the RV park um, that you'll see in the next application for the conditional use permit, they are um, proposing a 12-foot buffer and then a 10-foot buffer. So they'll have a buffer along Highway 17 as well as a buffer between the residential area. But that would be um, approved as part of, part of a site plan that would come through the county. How many, how many um, spaces would they have in there? Uh, 70 spaces is what they're proposing at this time. Okay, is, is there gonna have to be any kind of a uh, eyebrow type turn lane or anything for people to get in and out of there on Highway 17? On Highway 17? Um, currently, they, we've, we have had our, um, our DRT team review that and at this time there have not been any proposals to do that um, they do they are changing um, which we'll talk about a little bit more the conditional use application um, but they are they do have an existing driveway that they are going to abandon and do a new driveway into the property um, so they do have to get a permit through Georgia DOT to do that and so whatever criteria they would be requiring of that they would but this time they they are not proposing any um, any types of the reason I ask I mean I, as y'all probably agree with me that's probably one of the most dangerous pieces of road in Glenn County and Highway 17 mm -hmm. on both sides of the road going and coming we have a tremendous amount of traffic back and forth McIntosh mm -hmm. County and so forth um, and there's been several uh, fatal accidents right along in there I mean it's mm -hmm. bumper to bumper morning and evening mm -hmm. The uh, concern I would have would be putting, uh, you're talking about RVs, you use big uh, buses, uh, big one uh, quarter ton trucks pulling, pulling trailers, and um, which I don't, I mean, I live right up the road in Bell Point. I just don't remember seeing all that much stuff going up and down 17. And of course, in Bell Point, you got four, four lanes. Get down there where we are now, you got two lanes. And uh, last time I went down there, it was just extremely congested in almost any time of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be extremely concerned about putting those um, larger vehicles in and out of that, going in north-south direction. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they, and, and most of them, well, I would think 100% of them be coming off I-95. You getting, to me, uh, I, just, I just see a tremendous amount of congestion. And that, that's definitely something that um, is within the purview of the county to request is more information from the applicant on a traffic study. So um, with the conditional use permit, um, one of the conditions the Planning Commission placed on it was to submit a traffic study at the time they submit for their site plan approval. So, um, so that's definitely something that could be requested to get more information to, to get insight on that. Thank you. Sure. Once, once we've done the rezoning, then the traffic study is pretty much a moot point. Uh, not necessarily. Um, the zoning, I mean, will will obviously state what uses could be allowed there, 
but um, pretty much most of the uses that would be allowed in highway commercial would, re would be required to come back through the county for site plan approval. And so that is where we you know, get the chance to look at that site specific use to determine you know, what, what are the impacts, what's the chip generation, um, and we can ask for more information on traffic studies. So there's another chance for the county to evaluate that at that time. But not this board. Uh, correct, the site plan does go through the planning commission and that's right. the final approval, correct. Uh, Another question. You said the MPC vote was five to two. May I ask who voted for and who voted against because it wasn't on the uh, presentation? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, that's my staff report. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so the two dissenting uh, were Commissioners Hart and Lee. So, so that I'm clear, and I guess everybody else, if we vote for this, this we still, the planning commission can still reject this if the traffic study seems to create a problem for it. But, um, but we won't sure. be have an opportunity to <clears throat> vote again, right? So for the for the rezone proposals before you, um, the reason would be would be set at this time. So if the board approves the reason to highway commercial, I mean, that, that would be set at this time. Um, anything specific to the traffic study, though, um, you know, your next application before you is the conditional use permit, and there is um, some of the consideration, or the standards of evaluation in there um, do ask about impacts on traffic ways. So you would have a chance in this next application with a conditional use permit um, to look at that. And then again, the planning commission will look at it at site plan review, but the board would not look at the site plan. That answers your question. I think so, but okay. I just don't know if, uh, if I have enough information mm -hmm. without the traffic study, because um, I agree with what um, Commissioner Coleman mm -hmm. is saying. I mean, that, that is a concern sure. at this time. So. Any other questions for staff? I'd like to know, I'm sure you probably don't have a PowerPoint presentation, mm -hmm. but I'd like to know what, it, what are the permitted uses right now as Apparently, the property is zoned sure. with limited industrial mm -hmm. and forest agriculture. What, what could go there right now without coming before anybody for anything? Sure. Uh, I did, yeah, I did pull that up. So <laughs> under the forest agricultural district, which is um, a lot of the property, uh, the permitted uses are wildlife refuge, including a caretaker's residence, uh, farm or any kind of agricultural operation, tree farm, horticulture, horticultural nursery, church, synagogue, temple, or other place of worship, uh, private or semi-private club, animal hospital or boarding facility, a government-owned or operated use, um, a religious institution or camp, a golf course, and also one family dwelling, as long as there's 20,000 square feet of land, um, also a mobile home. <clears throat> Accessory uses, dredging, landfill, or excava excavation of natural materials, uh, radio and television station, home occupations, um, a, farm, a farm stand, produce stand, uh, public or private care homes, cemetery. Temporary uses, a private child care center, uh, telecommunication facilities and then uh, would you also like the conditional uses that could be applied for as well uh, how many are there there are <laughs> four <laughs> so I can read them off quick um, public utility installation commercial riding stable two-family dwelling um, industrialized dwelling and then there's some special uses as well that's a community fairground mobile home um, so that would be FA, and then for the limited industrial, the permitted uses are research and experimental laboratory, uh, government-owned facility, public utility, um, agricultural farm, horticultural nursery, radio television station, repair garage, office building, commercial trade or vocational school, off-street commercial parking, accessory uses, industrial use, um, and this is, you know, manufacturing. So it's any industrial use which involves manufacturing, processing, assembly, or storage operations. 
wholesale business, animal hospital or boarding, uh, retail businesses, provided that they're incidental to the permitted use. So the idea is it's more of an industrial use with some, some retail allowed. Uh, watchmen or caretakers, dwelling, uh, temporary use, and telecommunication facilities. And then the conditional uses are warehouse or other storage facility, automobile service station, truck or transportation terminal, and um, an open yard use, so for sale, rental, dismantling, and storage of, um, of salvage and junk materials. I, I, going back to another life, I, I was under the impression that in forest agriculture you could have a salvage yard. Mm. You could have a salvage yard, you could have a mining operation. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't look like currently we... Okay. We, oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, mining operation you can. So dredging, landfill, or the excavation of Land, natural materials. Yeah, landfill is what I was, yeah. uh, what yeah, I was referring exactly. to. Yeah, Yeah, dredging, landfill, or excavation of natural materials. So, yeah, yeah okay. so a mining operation yeah. um, would be allowed. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions for uh, staff? Okay, uh, this is a public hearing item, and so... Um, uh, again, uh, remembering the uh, criteria for public hearing uh, speakers, um, I'll entertain anyone that would like to speak in favor of this application. But please come forward. Please state your name uh, for the record. Mr. Good Schoenauer. afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. My name is Peter Schoenauer. I'm with Tidewater Engineering, and I'm representing the owner of the project, Mario Garcia, who's also in the audience. Um, we are here for a rezone and not a conditional use right now. I understand that, but we are committed to the RV park. Um, my client already has paid the Joint Warrant Sewer Commission in excess of $150,000 to secure the TAP fees. We have a, mem a memorandum of understanding in place with the Joint Water Sewer Commission. And we also have a letter of intent from Georgia Department of Transportation for a driveway. We worked quite closely with them in, uh, up in Jessup, District 5, GDOT. Um, initially, we, we had the driveway located elsewhere, and they said it's not going to work too close to the intersection with South, Southport and, and uh, Deerwood. So they made us move it further south. Um, the the av average, I mean, that seems to be a concern for everybody, and it rightfully so is, is traffic the according to um, gdot's uh, geo count they have a website where they have um, traffic counts and throughout the state and the closest one to this site is is a couple miles south and, and the number is like 2200 uh, 2490 uh, average daily traffic counts um, the Institute of Traffic Engineers, which is the go-to for, for traffic engineers, ITE Section 416, they give, a, they give a, a value for what they anticipate for trips to that uh, site for an RV based on acreage. And when you take away the wetlands, the developable, developable acreage, I think, is 6.43 acres. Um, and that would leave itself as with the adjacent peak hour so when, uh, from the hours of 7 to 9 a.m. is considered the peak hour for the adjacent street they on um, for the the average of those two hours um, for the a.m. peak would be three trips to the RV park the p.m. which is 4 to 6 p.m. is uh, six trips per hour I know there's some concern about the school kids in the morning so really that, that that's not a peak hour for the for the actual RV park it is for the adjacent traffic so during the adjacent traffic peak we have pretty low volume anticipated coming to the park. Um, as far as an eyebrow or, or a deceleration lane, I agree most of the traffic would probably be coming from I-95. Um, uh, GDOT will probably require a deceleration lane based on their criteria, based on the number of daily trips. Unfortunately, ITE doesn't have a number of daily trips. They only have the peak hour trips, so that's something we have to talk to GDOT about. But it's very possible they would require that, that deceleration lane southbound. <coughs> Um, we are proposing, a, we went through a lot of this in, with the Planning Commission. Um, my client has agreed to providing the, the county required buffer between us and the people in Deerwood. In addition to that, also planting a stand of bamboo. Um, I believe we said an eight-foot fence. I mean, we, we are committed to a buffer. We, we want a buffer. We don't want to look into other people's 
backyards. We don't want people coming into our property. We certainly want that separation there. We're going to promote a very good, healthy buffer. Uh, try to answer any questions if you have something. Questions for, me. for the applicant? You said you're going to put up an eight foot fence? We do agree on eight foot, right? Yes, yeah. opaque wooden, wooden opaque fence with the mandatory uh, buffer requirements per county ordinance and then also a stand of bamboo the whole, the whole way, which, which my neighbor did that and it's a wonderful buffer. It's, it's the, the upper point here that goes out towards, uh, hold on, let me get back here. It's kind of hard to see on this. What happened with the view here? It got really tiny. The upper point with the wetlands right in the middle of it, are, can I assume that you're not planning on doing anything with that whole upper point or are you going to try and put RV park in there behind that wetland. Behind the wetland that's closest to um, the folks in Deerwood, we what we're trying to do is, is minimize impact. We'd like to avoid any wetland impacts. Um, we, we see the, the wetlands as an amenity, um, good natural open space for the people to enjoy, and the only we may have to encroach just to get the buffer and our road, and a very minimal, probably less than a tenth of an acre encroachment if we can get our site plan approved the way we've, we've presented it. And I believe the Planning Commission uh, is favorable with, with the buffers we presented initially. This, this, the zoning ordinance has it so the uh, site plan actually is supposed to get approved administratively. But the Planning Commissioners requested that they have an opportunity to look at it again because they had concerns about the buffers. And uh, so we, that's why we're going back to the Planning Commission for... Ste uh, Stephanie, could you put that map back up here? I suspect we're going to need it. I, I Again, the, the one that Commissioner Stanbaugh is referring to there. Um, I think that you have, well, there you go. Is that what you needed, Commissioner? Yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm referring to is this upper point. There's a big, huge section of wetlands. So what do you plan on doing with that upper point up there? Between the folks at Deerwood and us, just, just a road to connect those two upland areas. <clears throat> Where's that road coming from? Well, with the other exhibit for the conditional use permit has, has the uh, conceptual plan. Um, so it would be a lot more clear at that point. The, the road is coming in south of the wetland. And we'll have the majority of the RV spaces in the, the office building, you know, the greeting building, and the, the pool and the bathhouse south of that big wetland. And then we also have some spaces to the north of that wetland in that triangular area. Well, how, how wide is that gap between the wetlands and the, the people's property? About 30, about, let's see, I've got a 20 foot road and a 12 foot buffer, so 32, and where we are barely encroaching in that southwest corner of the wetland right now. So we have an excess of, sorry? Oh, yeah, exactly, yes. There we go. And we could even, you know, jog that road and try to avoid that, that tip of the wetland there. We prefer to avoid it, but uh, we have to do a little bit of grading in there for the road shoulder. And that, those wetlands were delineated by Dan Busey, and, and uh, you know, he would help us get any core permits that we would need. Try to. All right, thank you. Any other questions for the, for the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Schoenhoff. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the application? Yes, sir. Please state your name. My name is Jim Bonds. And, Please come to the podium and yeah. so we get all this on. Good evening. My name is Jim Bonds, and yeah. I have Exit 29 storage, and we're out in Southport and Martin Palmer. And uh, just across from us, we have Earl Perry's RV Park. And that's a real, really uh, nice facility. And my office looks out on Martin Palmer and out at at, uh, at their RV park. And I'll tell you, I, I don't see much traffic going in or, in or out of there. And he's got over 100 spots. But a lot of people stay a week or they'll stay three or four days. They're not, he's not turning over 100 spots a day. It's not 
100 in, 100 out. Uh, I never see them add up. I never see the RVs add up. We have a number of people that store RVs with us. They're uh, careful, they're older, they're retired, they're responsible, they're uh, finicky drivers. They're, you know, they're, they don't go roaring down the, the street. They're, it, it's a good group of people. It's a good industry to promote in Glenn County. I think the tourism industry as a whole. I think that uh, the exit 29 area is probably the best area to have uh, something like this, growth like this. I think generally things are uh, underused. The streets are underused. You go around Martin Palmer, Palisades, walking around there, other than when school's getting in, and, in or out, it's, those streets aren't busy. Um, I, don't think, uh, I don't think the, uh, if you have uh, 70 spots in this, in this park and you're turning over a, a third of them a day, you know, that's not, that's not the 12 hours of daylight, that's not one vehicle but every 15 minutes. You know, you, you, you're not talking a whole lot of RVs going in or out. You know, you, you do the math on it. it you know, you can, you can find reasons to uh, deny anything, but I think, that, uh, I think that it's a good project and it's for a good area, you know, and, and I, I would endorse it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the application? Seeing and hearing none. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Yes, sir. Come to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, sir. My name is uh, Neil Bastable. I am a land planner. I'm a land planner of 50 years experience. I've lived in this county now for 12 years. I first came here in 1967, and I've lived here at, in the 90s as well. <clears throat> Basically, what and the reason why I'm here is to discuss what I think is an in incompatible use, largely what is a what I have seen happening in Highway 17 throughout this county, and that has to do with, in essence, what I would call creeping zoning. Okay, I'll speak to basically zoning here, although one of the commissioners mentioned one of the most primary issues, and that has to do with traffic and transportation. Okay, in essence, what we have here is really a uh, an incompatible zoning land use plan for this reason. Okay, you've, you've got, you've discussed and the staff has supported what amounts to is compatible and proximate uh, use on this. That's one of their findings, is it has to do with a compatible and proximate use. That's a stretch if she would go back to what amounts to is that document that shows the activity area. If you would show that activity area map, that is a stretch. You're bringing that thing, you're bringing and extending what amounts to is that kind of land use. You recall, you recall that plan. I think that uh, that is basically there is no compatible adjacency in my mind because of what amounts to is a highway that is going to be going what is, what is amounting to creeping commercial growth. It's not transitional. And if you reflect on the, what the maps you saw, you'll, you'll understand the, the concern. Okay, the essence of the next part of the part of it has to do with the fact that has to do with the fact that you have an existing RV park zoned that currently zoned C1 that is just north on 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 303. That is approximately double the size of this. That's almost 16 acres and that 16 acres is substantial and it is adjacent to an existing residential Okay, the, it, and it's also surrounded by commercial. That's a world of difference from this part of the property, this part of the county. RV parks, okay, are really often seen as not permanent, but amounts to as a trans transitional land use. When you know that the land use proposed here could be commercial, highway commercial, and you saw those lists of the kind of land uses that can occur here, Folks, what we're looking at here is the potential of increasing commercial use going down in an area that is outside of your activity zone area that you've seen. Okay, the, the essence of it is we'll, beyond zoning, and of course we can go back to the site plan aspect of this thing, you're in a floodplain here of a category one with an average elevation of 10 to 12 feet. Is that the kind of land use things that need to be in a 
in, in a floodplain of 10 to 12 feet. You got the proximity of degrading a water course right adjacent to it that you can see that goes under that bridge right there that leads into it. And you, in essence, as you've heard talked about as it relates to the possible issues related to access, I can point to, to what amounts to is you've, got a, you've heard people talk about a dangerous area vis-a-vis Park Swamp Road and the, and the adjacent area. You've got an extremely narrow bridge here. You're going to have an access, as that site plan showed, going in there like that. Okay, the requirement, the county's going to, the highway department is going to require turn lanes of significance on both sides of this. The essence of it is, is you got a land use here that is really inappropriate. It's highway creep, folks. It's basically what you see is highway creep. It's happened through this county since 67 since I've been here and in 90 since I've been here. It is continuous. You've got the opportunity commissioners to stop this kind of thing, to stop this, excuse me, to stop this kind of creeping, z creeping zoning kind of things that happen. And I would, beyond that, I can talk about the transient behavioral issues. I've talked about physical issues. Behavioral issues relates to the fact of what is an RV park with transient use. Go take a look at your stats, your crime stats. Go look at your crime stats in terms of your area for this area. Go look at the existing RV park that has spaces that are typically only 50% occupied, leading back to the proposal that is this a temporary land use or if it's highway commercial, in fact, are we not looking at something that is really a future zoning for something commercial? Let's call it what it is. It's a temporary land use. Sorry, your five minutes are Thank up. you. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, I'd be delighted to answer. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Yes, I'm Julian Smith, and I will speak in opposition to this. First, the main purpose of this request is to make it possible for the applicant to create a new recreational vehicle park with 70 spaces for RVs. Why is yet another RV park necessary in a county where we already have more than a dozen such facilities, including some fairly nice ones? Second, in the absence of a pressing need for yet another RV park, it would be premature to change the zoning on this parcel to allow the proposed use that would a proposed use that would be contrary to the purposes enumerated in the preamble and enactment clause of Glen County zoning ordinance. Among them, the following, and I quote, preventing the overcrowding of land, promoting the sustained stability of neighborhoods, encouraging the most appropriate use of land. This application does none of that. Third, to change the zoning for this proposed use would encourage commercial development to creep south along Highway 17 and would endanger the value of the many homes immediately west of the parcel as well as the potential value of the large undeveloped areas now wooded immediately south and east of this parcel. Fourth, one of the findings of your staff report indicates the property in question, quote, has a reasonable economic use as currently zoned, unquote. I ask you to encourage the applicant to find a reasonable economic use appropriate to the current zoning after you deny this application. Fifth, you take into account the two members of the Mainland Planning Commission voted against recommending approval of this rezoning to you. I think you should consider that a significant red flag. Sixth, the 8.4 acre lot in question was foreclosed upon by the Bank of the Ozarks in 2012 and was purchased by the applicant less than a year ago. In an article in the Brunswick News on Tuesday, I find the statement that 
Pete Schoenauer, the agent for the applicant, said his client would, quote, pull out of the RV park project if he had to wait too long for approval, unquote. Why is that information important? Because it suggests that the applicant is not in this project for the long haul, that he wants a quick turnaround, perhaps so he can unload the property with all the necessary approvals in place, or maybe with just the zoning change in place. Seventh, the staff report does not indicate any finding relevant to whether or not the zoning decision will, re, quote, will result in a use which will or could ha cause an excess or burdensome impact on schools, unquote. Given that transient students do sometimes burden local schools, there should have been a finding on that matter. Eighth, please don't fall back on the pious belief that the applicant has property rights. Of course he does. But those rights do not include the right to do with his property anything he wants. It doesn't include the right to affect negatively the quality of life of the residents who abut his property. Ninth, the applicant is not someone who has owned and cared for and cherished this property for years or decades. He is not someone who has thought long and hard about the highest and best possible use of this property. Had he done so, he would not be planning what he plans, that mess right there. Finally, on a related matter, let me remind the Board of Commissioners and the planning staff that several years ago, the former director of community development began the process of deciding whether to change some areas on St. Simons Island from highway commercial to limited commercial. That seems to have fallen through the cracks and needs to be brought back for serious consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. State, state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, sir. My name is Robert Burke. I'm the adjacent property owner to the south on the other side of the creek. I don't live on the property, but I still own 16 acres there. I've owned that property for almost 40 years. Not the piece across from the creek, but my initial piece. I have like four lots there, totaling 16 acres. I lived there for over 20 years. I know what that creek's like. My biggest concern is the wetlands. I know they hired somebody out of Savannah to do the wetlands delineation, but it is flat out wrong. If you look at the wetlands inventory from the U.S. Wildlife Service online, it's a creek. It flows. It's a flowing creek. It's a floodplain. It's not disjointed polygons that aren't joined together. If you'd have seen that creek there in Hurricane Irma, you know what I'm talking about. It turns into a small river. You're talking about putting 12 RV spots along that wetlands with the potential of affecting the drainage hundreds of acres upstream from there, including my property. Um, I'm very concerned about that. I also brought up the traffic. When they paved Buck Swamp Road, it used to be closer to that bridge abutment. It's no longer. They moved it down. I own the old part of Buck Swamp Road. The DOT made them do that because of that bridge abutment. Now you're going to put a driveway almost as close to that as uh, old Buck Swamp Road was. The other thing is, you talk about buffers. There's no buffer along my property line. And the uh, developer said that, oh, we'll do a 20-foot buffer along the creek. Well, guess what? The creek's on my property. And if you look at that uh, pin closest to 17, that's almost 100 foot away from the creek. So 20 foot from the creek ain't going to do nothing there. But it's wetlands. It should be a buffer. And the wetlands are flat out wrong. You look at the uh, Glen County GIS, and you look at the flood zone maps, and it's a corridor that goes through there. It's not 
two little, three little blob, blobs along the creek. That's, that's wrong. That's totally wrong. Uh, that's basically all I got to say. But, I mean, I don't know what's the best land use for that property. I understand. You know, I, the, the development is creeping down 17. I've lived there long enough. I mean, when I first lived there, there was nothing out there. The fire station was a minute mark. You know, now it's a fire station. I mean, a lot of people don't remember that. And there are already a bunch of RV parks in the area with a lot of people that stay longer than they're supposed to, especially the one on 303. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to speak in opposition? Good evening, my name is Rhonda Harden, and I'm opposed to the possibility of a new RV park on Highway 17 South at the entrance of Deerwood Way. I live at 112 Leslie Lane, which is in Willow Creek. I get to my home by turning onto uh, Deerwood Way. It's one way in and one way out. No, the RV park is not going to affect my home, but it's going to affect me by increased traffic on Highway 17 and the view of the highway when turning left or crossing over. When I left home this morning, I looked to my right and I realized that the view of Highway 17 would be obscured if the RV park is built, thus creating difficulty to see the highway clearly. The traffic is horrendous already at this intersection every morning during school mornings and with the addition of the RV park, it would be increased. There's no red light at this intersection. There have already been numerous wrecks at this intersection. Even though I would not be directly affected, my coworker and neighbor, Susan Altman, as well as my cousin, Marsha Alexander, will be directly affected, not to mention several of my friends, including Serena Fryer. We have all lived in the subdivision for well over 20 years, and we enjoy the peace and quiet. If you've never been camping in any type of RP, RV park or campsite, the main purpose of going camping is to go and explore. You don't stay at your campsite unless it's freezing or raining. I've been camping before. A person explores what's around them. To explore at this RV park would be to infringe on our privacy, our safety, as well as increased traffic and crime. Going to an RV park is not like going to a motel or a hotel where you park your car, go inside, check in, and then go to your room. You have a big camper or a motorhome, and at the entrance, your camper or motorhome has to stay there with you because there's nowhere else to park. With that being said, it will stall traffic. I've also been told you're wanting to put a bamboo as a border. When bamboo's planted, the roots overtake anything that's nearby. So it will create a nice border, but it will overtake septic tanks and anything else in its path. So basically, this company is wanting to take a nice, quiet neighborhood and create havoc where there is none. In closing, I'm asking you to not put this RV park in this location find another nice wooded area. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? <clears throat> My name's Serena Fryer. Mine's more of a personal. The driveway you see right there is my driveway. Well, it's his land, but I've been there for 25 years, maintained that driveway, mowed that driveway, put brush away from that driveway. And there is a little known law called adverse possession to where if you are on that, you maintain a property by mowing it, cutting it, taking care of it, it and get it fixed. Or you're using it openly and it's obvious to the observers that you're using it as your own and that you use it often. It's not just something that you sometimes walk down. It's considered adverse possession. He's wanting to put two RVs right across the driveway, right beside my property, right by my house. So I ask that you do not let this happen. Thank you. Thank you. I saw another hand back there. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioners. I'm Randy Watson. I live on uh, 60 Deerwood Drive or Deerwood Way. I've been there about 
well, almost 18 years. Uh, when I moved out there, it was so quiet, you could sit out in your front yard and listen to the whippoorwills and hoot owls. But recently, a apartment complex, Abington Woods Apartments, cleared probably an area just a little bigger than this. When they removed the forest, now I can hear the hum of I-95 all the time like a, a low bumblebee, all the time. During the holidays, you can't stand it. I mean, it's moderate sound level then. When they clear this land to build the RV park, that's gonna take more buffer zone or, or sound barrier away. I know they were trying to be nice and extend a, a small buffer, but 10, 20, 30 feet ain't gonna get it. Because when they moved, removed eight and a half acres or so at that apartment complex, suddenly I could hear I-95 and never heard it, except for on 4th of July or Easter weekend or something like that. Also, this is just the facts, I'm not blaming anyone, but we've had seven burglaries since that apartment complex come in across the street. Three within 35 uh, yards of my home. And people don't like to talk about it, but RV parks bring in people that are one step from homeless. They're transient, they stay a while, they move out. Some of them break the rules, move out so many days and then come right back in. When these hardworking people around me go to work, their homes are wide open, just come right across the border. And I, I hate to see that, the good taxpaying, hardworking citizens. Uh, the school thing has been addressed. It's a crapshoot when you pull up there between a quarter to eight and 8.30. Uh, you, you start to turn left, you wait your turn, you start to go and somebody goes around the bus and makes their own lane. So I have to go to that little park where I cross from where this RV park is, make a U-turn to drive down 17 North safely. So that's gonna be a problem. And then the other thing is the lights and the, and the noise and the extra traffic. These RV people, they say, won't be coming in during peak school entrance and exits. But when you, people are coming to camp, you're not gonna tell them when they can come and, and exit an RV park. They're gonna be all the time. They're going to be misplaced off 95. They're not going to know where to turn. They're going to be driving cautiously and slowly, holding up traffic during a heavy traffic situation. I just think they'd be much better suited for us and themselves if they moved a little further on out in the country, away from this, the creek, the intersection to the schools, and this neighborhood. Because it's a nice neighborhood, and I love it, but I'm seeing it change before my very eyes. And I don't think we need this type of thing bordering our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm Katrina Goss. I live in Fox Creek, which is across 17 from this proposed site. Um, I live backed up to Risley Middle School, and I also live on the wetland that did turn into a raging river that flows directly into this site. Um, my concern, the wetland thing was new to me tonight till coming here, but my concern is traffic because I cringe every time I see a bus pull out of that intersection. It's, it's very dangerous, that intersection, for all the buses that are going. What was not on the map that she, she um, showed us earlier is Risley Middle School, which is pretty much directly across from the site. I mean, it's not on the 17, but it's right next to the multi-apartment complex. Um, there are kids standing. I mean, my concern is the transient life that this is going to bring to a, a, an area where we have a middle school, an elementary school, boys and girls club, and a preschool daycare area, all coming up and down the parkway across from this spot. So my concern is, number one, the safety of the buses that are um, trying to get on 17 and get off 17 is currently as dangerous as is. I hadn't even considered the gigantic RVs um, on the road when I thought of the traffic. Um, but I'm really more concerned about the transient people that are going to be across from these schools and we have kids standing on the highway we have children standing on highway 17 
to be picked up by buses. So I'm, I'm concerned about the people that, not the people that are vacationing and coming in, that sounds grand, but that's not what happens. What happens is it turns into a low income rental for people who can't afford homes or housing. And I don't know any nicer way to say that, but we see that at the uh, um, RV park north, I guess, on 17 as is. Um, anyway, I, I'm begging you not to allow this in our neighborhood. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Okay, seeing none, commissioners. I would make one comment, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I don't plan to support this, but um, um, I reject the comments that um, affordable housing um, and low-income folk create more crime, and, and that's the reason to vote against this. Um, I, I really think that um, that is not the American way and it's not the Glen County way. Gentlemen, I, I think uh, back to my original statement, um, I think taking in consideration the uh, what's already there, uh, including these residents that have stepped up and, and spoke their piece, um, uh, I just I don't see the benefit for the community of um, you know changing this for that purpose and there has been a lot of a lot of really good points made by the folks that have stepped up here tonight so um, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to support this thank you well since we seem to be having our comment period before motions made I'll go ahead and say mine um, I have two problems with this gentleman the first is we keep seeing people buy property that's not zoned to do what they want to do on it and they come to us and say okay I bought this piece of property that's zoned FA which naturally is cheaper than property zoned residential commercial or highway commercial et cetera, et cetera. now I want the County Commission to change the rules so that I can use it for what I want what it's not zoned for the gentleman's point about zoning creep is the exact same problem that we have in this county including St. Simons Island because for decades I have watched past commissions change the zoning on the island and in other places and now we're hearing oh it was poor planning in 1968 or it was poor planning no a lot of the issues we've had is not poor planning 30 or 40 or 50 years ago it's because past commissions have changed the rules somebody bought a piece of property that wasn't zoned to do what they wanted to do and the county commission changed the rules so they could do it and then we end up with issues we end up with nonsensical combinations of industrial commercial residential this is the same thing here in my view we have a map, an overlay map laid out for the county, which shows here's your commercial, here's your industrial, highway commercial, whatever, light industrial, whatever it is. Down here we have residential. And now what we're trying to do, or what we're talking about doing, with all due respect to, to the owner, is taking that commercial or industrial and shoving it in to a residential area. It's the same thing we've seen time and time again. We've seen it in the city of Brunswick, we've seen it on St. Simons, and we're seeing a lot of it here in Glen County. And that's my concern, is if we're gonna do these overlay maps and we're going to plan, we're spending a lot of money for a comprehensive plan for Glen County, but if we're gonna change the rules every time somebody buys a piece of property because he got it in receivership and it was cheap and now he can do something else with it to make money with it what's the sense of doing a comprehensive plan when I bought my property I made sure before I made my offer to check to see what the zoning for that property was because I wanted to make sure that if I wanted to build a house on that property that wasn't going to require a zoning change and and that's the responsible thing to do 
Now, I don't know if, if, if there's a way that, that people can come to us before they buy a piece of property, but, you know, to be honest, the gentleman should have had whoever owned it come to the commission and ask for a rezoning before he bought it. I feel bad that he spent money on this, but it wasn't zoned to do what he wanted to do. And this is going to affect people's lives, people's homes, their property values. Forget transients, forget any of that. I don't care what you want to put there. Now, and I'll say this, especially to the homeowners, if somebody wanted to put a, a, a pig farm there or a chicken farm and it's zoned for that, I shed no tear. I say nothing because <laughs> that was what it was when it was when it was purchased. When you purchased your homes, that was the zoning. And if somebody wants to put something that's already approved there, I'm not going to stand up and yell. But in this case, and it has little to do with whether it's an RV park or an industrial plant, anything that's not, it's not zoned for at this point, in my opinion, we're changing the rules. And that's not fair to the people who purchased their homes in an area where they never expected this type of thing to be built because the zoning didn't allow it. And we're looking to change the rules. And that, that's what bothers me. That's what really bothers me. So I, I can't support this. I feel bad for the applicant. And if you want to put a farm out there, go for it. But Or anything else that it's zoned for, but as far as us changing the rules, I don't think we should continue to do this. It's something that I've seen happen for decades, and we're still doing it, and I'd like to see us stop. Most of the things that I voted for for zoning changes, taking something from FA that's across a residential commercial, making it a residential commercial, I got no problem with that because it's right there. But this is a residential FA area. It's not designed for this type of project, and I would implore you to think about it. And, and if this was on St. Simons Island, I will guarantee you there wouldn't be a whole lot of fervor and support to vote for this. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Anyone else that would like to make a comment? Sure, I'll make a comment. I, I think that uh, Commissioner Stambaugh makes some, uh, some excellent points, and uh, I'll keep it brief, but just to say uh, uh, I tend to agree with his position. Thank you. Um, in essence, I guess I agree with his position as well. However, um, I have more concern about the current zoning than I do about the proposed zoning. Uh, going from limited industrial and forest agriculture to highway commercial, in my opinion, is down zoning. Uh, there are things, as we, as uh, Stephanie read that list of things, including a, literally a junkyard and a pig farm that can go in the zoning just exactly like it is that can happen tomorrow without anybody's permission from this board or the planning commission or anybody else. Uh, they are permitted uses in forest agriculture and limited industrial. And, and my concern is for the neighbors. Uh, my concern is not for the applicant. Uh, the applicant bought the property as it is, but my concern is for the neighbors and what could potentially go in their backyard. And I would submit to you that it, there are things on that list that are potentially much more egregious than an RV park. And so, and as far as this transit thing, I don't have any uh, particular expertise in the demographics of these RV parks, but I did visit the one across the street. And I don't think homeless people drive $500,000 motorhomes. Uh, and that is uh, what a lot of those motorhomes are. But, uh, again, my concern is for the neighbors, and uh, so, um, and, and what could go there without any oversight um, it concerns me. Thank you. Anybody else got anything I'd like to say? Yeah, I would like to point out to the commission, the chairman uh, Brunson, that the limited industry you're talking about is correct. You could put something, quote, worse, but it's a very small little piece of that whole section, it's a very small little piece. You're not gonna get, uh, you, even if you had something that's already zoned to go in there, you have a nice big buffer there. Um, as far as the other stuff that can go into FAA, as I stated, okay, it is what it is, but it's not, an, it's, it's, it's not this RV park. And the gentleman's point, it's zoning creep. We've got to stop doing it. 
whether it's St. Simons, here, or anywhere else in Glen County, we need to stop that kind of creep and encroachment. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else got anything for the good of the order? Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to entertain a motion to deny. Uh, we have a motion to deny. Is there a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of denying the motion for the uh, rezoning, uh, signify by raising your right hand. How many is that? Six. Five. Five. Six. All those uh, opposed, raise your right hand. You did not vote. You abstained. No, I did. You I voted four. Yeah. Oh, it's six to one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. The the, the motion to deny is uh, passed, and so. Uh, I don't think we need to move on to the conditional use permit, do we? Commissioners, it is moot, um, but uh, it is an agenda item, so I would recommend that you just table it indefinitely just to remove it from the agenda. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to deny item number two, CPU 3670, South Huey Tree RV Park, Good. to consider a request for additional use. You want to defer it, defer it indefinitely? Just to table it indefinitely, indefinitely. Just it indefinitely. because it's moot yeah. at this point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to amend my motion to defer it indefinitely. Okay, got Mr. Chairman. Motion second. and a second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. It is unanimous. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve all items on consent agenda general business and consent agenda personnel committee with the exception of any items any commissioner so wishes to pull. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, I'd like to pull the... Um, Item number 10 for discussion. 10's on general business. That's, 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 10 is under consent agenda personnel. Uh, minute, you got a wrong, you got a different agenda than I do. Did that get changed? Am I looking at the old, okay, okay. I think I got the, I'm just looking at my piece of paper here. Okay, we got, uh, we got a motion and a second to approve all items, consent. All right, any discussion? All those in favor of approving the consent agenda for general business and uh, personnel, signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Thank you. All right, item number, I guess I, I need to get the right agenda here. No, apparently I don't have the right agenda, Mr. Chairman. My question is, what are the rest of us missing that yeah. they're not? I know they go to that's general business. 10's general business. Okay. Consider approving a waiver of the $1,000 rezoning application fee for Ms. Maria <laughs> Klonauer to rezone the property from R9 one family residential to planned development. Uh, Stephanie. Great. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Maria Kokenauer has requested this um, on behalf of her um, father and mother, the Koreas. Um, on January 7, 2018, um, Ms. Kokenauer did uh, officially request a waiver of a $1,000 rezone fee. This is an, an application fee that the Community Development Department has uh, to process a rezone for a planned development. So she has requested this. Uh, the property that uh, her parents own is at 503 Longview Road, and that's parcel 0402248 on St. Simons Island. Uh, and the reason that uh, Ms. Koganauer is requesting this, um, she has had several discussions with our staff, and she has stated that uh, her father purchased the property in early 2010, and she stated at that time um, he was doing some due diligence, and they uh, found that there were some discrepancies in the zoning. Um, she said that she found information that stated the property was zoned PD, and so um, and in fact, the property has always been zoned R9. So our zoning maps have never indicated that it was zoned PD. It's always been zoned R9. Uh, but it looks like there was some kind of discrepancy for a period of time, and there was some unofficial information out there that uh, perhaps stated it was, um, or indicated it was PD. Uh, staff did pull property tax records from 2009 to 2010. The tax, property tax records did indicate PD on this property, um, but as I stated, the zoning has always been R9. 
In 2010, uh, the Community Development Department did become aware of this discrepancy, and so there was an application that came before the board on February 18th, 2010, to make this correction. So um, they did notice that zonings are nine, but we do have some mapping that's showing that it's um, PD. So the board did make that correction, and following that, um, since that since that point in time, our uh, records have been have been reflecting. It is the correct R9 zone. Um, in researching what might have happened um, to have this occur, it does appear that there was um, maybe an issue when the, the paper zoning maps were being digitized. And so during that digitization, digitization process, excuse me, um, there may have been an overlap um, from an adjacent property that was PD. So it appears that that might have happened at that time. Um, so at this time, um, I'm happy to answer any questions, um, but I do want to state that, that the request before you is purely a waiver of the $1,000 fee. Um, if um, the applicants have indicated they do plan to apply for a rezone to PD, and at that time, the staff would duly notice the application and it would come before the Planning Commission and the Board. So really, the only request before you is whether the board desires to waive that $1,000 application fee. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have on that. So what you're saying here, all after all that, was the fact that there was an error when Ms. Kokenire's father bought the property. It was not what he thought he bought. My understanding you is- say, You're saying he came back and changed the, we came back and changed the zoning after he bought the property based on what he saw on the record? Um, the zoning has always been R9. The zoning maps have always had it R9, so, R9, so it was never a change of zoning. Um, it just appears that there were some records that were publicly available from the county that did indicate that perhaps it was a wrong zoning, that it was zoned PD. So we view it as a discrepancy that occurred during that time, um, but that that's what they've stated is that's what they found. So is that a yes to my question? I'm sorry, this is not a is public that, hearing. I'm sorry. Is that a yes to the question I asked? So we changed we changed it after her dad bought the property. The property was the zoning was never changed. What happened in twenty ten was that the correction was made so that all records that are available at the county um, were reflecting the correct zoning of R nine. Okay, so well, really I mean, you're just saying it in a different way. Uh, what, what Mr. Coke and I were bought and what it ended up being is two different things, regardless of if it was a change or an error or whatever. At um, one point it was this, mm -hmm. he bought the property, sure. and then it's this. Uh, Commissioner Coleman, if I might try to, uh, more clearly answer your question. I'm Pamela Thompson, Director of Community Development. The Community Development Department keeps the official zoning of all properties through zoning resolutions from the original uh, adoption of zoning for the county. So the Community Development paper copies of this property have always accurately shown this parcel as R9 zoning. With the uh, with the creation of computers and GIS and the availability to offer information to the public. The county, as most counties did, decided to digitize those paper, uh, that paper information to make it more readily available to the public. That is an unofficial record and it is accurate to the best of the GIS department's ability. That layer, it is not the official zoning property, it is a pictorial representation of what the property is. And that GIS zoning layer is what showed this parcel as planned development. Then as staff was going through it in, in 2010 is when it was recognized that it was not accurately reflected in the electronic version and that was what was brought forward to the board at that time to correct that layer so that if someone did look at it through our publicly available unofficial information, they would see R9. So the official zoning of that property has always been R9. It was just the digital label on that property. With that said, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it did that the way it was when the gentleman bought the property, 
he was buying what he knew to be fact at that point. He did use publicly available unofficial information. Had had a zoning certification letter been requested at that time, it would have shown R9. They, the applicant um, and their family did use publicly available information to, to do that due diligence. Yes, sir. I mean, isn't that what it's there for? It's there with those disclaimers that it is as accurate as it can be and is not to be considered the official declaration of zoning of that property, yes, sir. Well, with, with that said, Pam, I mean, I understand. But we put it out there, okay? So basically, somebody at the county, when we were there doing the transition, made a oops. And the man bought property he thought was zone PD based on county GIS data so my thing is well if that's totally unofficial and nobody should rely on it then why don't we just take it down and be done with it we're not saying not relying on it what we're saying is the property was never zoned PD we absolutely agree that when they went online when it I showed that when I mentioned that I went and checked the zoning on my property yes that's where I went yes that's sir. the first place I went yes okay? sir. so I think it's reasonable that somebody would go there see that and say oh okay and he bought the property and when did he buy the property when was it purchased 2010 2010 yes sir so but he bought it before this correction was made yes sir okay and and yes sir to your point staff completely understands that GIS and property tax records are a tool that should be used to check <laughs> the details of your property we just wanted to make it clear that the county never legally change the zoning that this is the information that was available to no, them. I got, I got that. Okay. I'm just saying that people rely on this information. That's why we put it out there. And, and you know, it, it bothers me that, that we would say no to this request and say, well, you relied on county information the county puts out and we made a mistake, so you're going to be penalized for it. That, that's all I'm saying. Yes, sir. And, and to be Not clear. poorly on your department or anything else. Correct. To be clear, staff can't waive fees. That's why this is before no, you. So. I totally understand that. I just, yeah. I'm just saying we, we put it out there for the public to consume, to look at, and we made a mistake. That's not a big deal in my opinion. I'm just saying it's people should be able to rely on that information. If we make a mistake, this is a small price to pay to fix the problem. Thank you. So, so let me ask a question. It's buying a piece of property is not like going to the grocery store to pick up a loaf of bread. When, when, you, when you go to buy a piece of property, aren't there certain levels of, of, of legal review that you go through with either your agent or a title company or whoever? I mean, is it, is it not, is it presumptuous, presumptuous of me not to expect that somebody else, uh, either a real estate agent or a lawyer or a title company, somebody would have picked that up? Or does everybody rely on the unofficial uh, county uh, uh, website that, that has this disclaimer? I think, yeah, there's, I mean, I think the most typical way is, you know, most people are doing a period of due diligence and are looking at a variety of sources, including tunnel searches and um, information at the county. And um, it, at this time, it, you know, Ms. Coconut has not presented any written information from the county um, that we have seen that states that the county did put anything in writing stating that this was, you know, zone PD. Um, you know, we are aware of the property tax record that did show PD, um, but that's that's really the the only place that we have have seen this. So um, but that's typically what most people do. We'll do some level of that. Yeah. Are there any other uh, questions or comments? No, I just like to say my, my my property attorney uses the GIS all the time. Even has a subscription to it, and everything repays for the super. So I, I, I can't hear that because you're not close enough to your microphone. Are you saying your attorney but relies just my, on my this? My property attorney site? uses the GIS all the time. He even has the pay to use program that the county. Puts but out he also there doesn't do a title search or anything yeah, he, like he that? he does, but I'm just saying it's not unreasonable for people to, to, to look at the GIS, even professional. Well, I understand that, but that, is, that, is that the first the first take? I mean, you know. I mean, I'm, not a, I'm not a property attorney. That's what I'm, I'm suggesting. Uh, I, I just, you know, it, it sounds like the, the, the county, to, to a certain extent, dropped the ball. But, yeah. but there's also a period of due diligence and the responsibility, the caveat emptor, you know, that you get 
lawyers and professional real estate people involved to do your bidding. Like I say, it's not like going to the grocery store and buying a loaf of bread. No, you, you don't have to use an attorney, Commissioner. You, well, I, you can do I got it. Property, I got it. And if you don't, on your own. Yeah, and if you like don't, it's on you. Yeah, and then something okay. like happens. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. If you don't, if that's if that's the extent of your uh, <coughs> uh, review of the process, well, it's on you. I, I'm not arguing with you. All right. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the staff? Yes, sir. Mr. 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 Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Approve waiver. Approving the waiver of the $1,000 rezoning application for Ms. Maria Kokenauer. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the waiver of the $1,000 for the application signify by raising your right hand. Those opposed? All right, the ayes have it, and the waiver is approved uh, for the $1,000. Um, the, um, I'd, I'd like to discuss item nine. I had the wrong uh, or agenda number uh, here. I had two different agendas. Uh, on, I guess we on, on my agenda, that's part of the consent agenda we just approved. Well, it is, it is, and that's my point. Uh, Mr. Attorney, I, we've already approved that, but can we discuss item number, what was 10 on my agenda, but it's nine on everybody else's? Commissioners, if there's no objection from the rest of the commission, I think it's a point of privilege you may take. All right, I, I'd like to talk about this uh, item number nine, authorize the, the reorganization of uh, county departments and approve the assistant county manager job description and placement and pay of grade 37. Anybody got any heartburn with doing that? Okay. Nope. Uh, Mr. Hours, you want to talk about that? Uh, there's been some miscommunication in the community that we were adding a staff position. Mr. And chairman, if I may, um, I'll take this as the chairman of the personnel committee. No, no we're not adding another position. When uh, Chief Powell was moved to uh, the chief of police of the Glen County uh, Police Department, his job as director of, was it community affairs? Community. Yeah, is that the proper? Community. Yeah was vacated what you would ask us to do was to hire somebody and basically put into that position but you wanted to <coughs> consider it to be an assistant county manager the reason for that title change in my opinion is because so the person taking this job understands and I believe that we actually did use a higher ranking than what uh, Chief Powell was is so they understand that part of their job is not only overseeing these departments but also assisting you with other duties and responsibilities in the in your daily operations so we're not really creating another position we're filling an old position which may cost us a little less <coughs> maybe a little more or the same not really sure at this point but it's something that i felt compelled to push for because you do do a lot of things behind the scenes that people don't see and could use some help with that and I think that when we uh, had created the original position, we probably should have done something along these lines as well so that the person in that job knew they had the authority, not just the responsibility, but the authority to step in a little bit more than just those two departments. And that, that's the bottom line of what, what this was all about. Well, I, I, and I agree totally. And, and this uh, assistant county manager will have responsibility for recreation department, animal control, and will give a lot of flexibility, I think, to the county manager that he didn't have before with the director of community service. So is that, did we do okay, Mr. Dowers? All right, good. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Stanball. You did good. I'm glad I met your approval there, Alan. Thanks. <laughs> You're good. We're going to raise your pay. Uh, all right. Uh, we got anything for executive session? Good. All right. Get a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Sorry.